you trained with Travis Mash. He's a West Side alum, um, very strong multi ply lifter, but also an Olympic coach, also an athletic coach. What was that experience like, and what were some of the some of the formative lessons you took away from that? Yeah, so so after I got into powerlifting and was no longer mostly just training to get to get my vertical up, um, instead of it being like a formal coach client relationship, uh, Travis just invited me to come train with like him and his crew, like for for the powerlifting training they were already doing, and you know I I definitely learned some stuff about training and programming from that ex- that experience, but I think the biggest thing I got out of it was one, it helped me recalibrate my expectations for, you know, just like what, what someone could do, I guess. Uh, cause, cause like in, in a high school weight room, uh, like even as a freshman, I was always one of the strongest people. Like there, there were, you know, I, I was, I was like 160 pounds, um, and had been lifting for like four months and, there were there were like three or four seniors who were like offensive defensive linemen who were stronger than me, but I was stronger than everyone else. Um, so, you know, it was kind of a, a big fish in a small pond type deal. And also like it, it kind of put the idea in my head where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm already lifting like X amount and the strongest people I'm seeing in here are only outlifting me by 10, 15%. So maybe when I start kind of reaching some of those numbers, uh, you know, that that's, that's pretty fucking strong. I should feel good about myself. And therefore that's when I should kind of expect things to start slowing down progress, become a slog. And then as soon as I start lifting with, with Travis and and his buddies, um, you know, see people benching five, 600, like putting eight, 900 pounds on a squat bar, um, you know, plenty of people pulling over seven. And it's like, oh, okay, never mind. I'm I'm weak as fuck. Uh, all of these people are so much stronger than me. And uh, you know, so when I do squat 500, I haven't done anything, you know, like I, I'm seeing people squatting 300 pounds more than that on a on a weekly basis. So how how should 500 be a number that even gets in my head? Like that's a that's a stepping stone to the next thing, you know. So it kind of helped recalibrate that. And and I think you can get that a little bit just from like watching, you know, strong people do their thing on the internet. But it is just, it is just qualitatively different to see it in person. Um, like it, it is, it is just more real when you're, when you're there and can witness it. Um, and I think the uh, the other big thing I got out of it was just like what it looks like to train hard. You know, um, I, I think a lot of, I think a lot of folks who've not had much experience training with really serious lifters think they're going to the gym and, and really pushing themselves and really getting after it. And they're just not. (laughs) Um, And, you know, I, I think that, uh, I, I think that ultimately effort and consistency do trump just about everything else. Um, and, you know, I, I saw what effort looked like and I, I saw what consistency looked like that, that was a, a serious, like that, that was a multiply powerlifting crew and multiply multiply is a team sport. Like there's only one person on the platform, but there's five other people helping you get into all of your gear. You need a small army to spot everything. So people won't die. Like it's um like to make it work, you've got to have that crew. And I mean, multiply lifting wasn't huge in North Carolina. So there were people driving, you know, up to like an hour and a half, three, four times a week to, to train with this crew. Um, and so, you know, I, I saw that like, Hey, if, if I'm going to take it, to take this seriously, um, you know, I, I'm certainly not saying that like everyone has to take it that seriously. Like if the best powerlifting gym is an hour and a half from you, you've got to like drop all of your other interests and just like make sure like you know spend three hours commuting uh, a few times a week to make sure you can go to that gym i'm certainly not saying like everyone has to do that absolutely not but it it taught me the lesson of like if i if i do want to be that serious um you know 
and and I do have to do like go to that level to to have like the consistency of training that that I want to need. Um, like that that's on the table, you know. Uh, so I mean, more more than anything, I, I think those were those were the two the two biggest takeaways I had from that period. I'm interested in your take on because I heard you talk about this a little bit uh, when you were on the Elite FTS podcast, talking about the today's lifter with comparison to to maybe how people kind of got brought into it before um it, it was along the lines of um maybe the bar being a bit lower i think you used an analogy like if you just wanted to take up golf and you weren't taking it that seriously you get a coach and it's like whatever results you get they're they're appropriate for the investment that you put into it do you find that to be a, a really big factor when you're working with people that, that kind of has its own recommendations with it, or do you, do you find that you can kind of massage everything into the, the same typical approach? Oh yeah, no, it, it, um, it definitely depends a lot on, on what the person wants to, to get out of it and calibrating expectations. Like, you know, if, if someone says like, Hey, uh, so I mean, ultimately everyone wants it all, you know, uh, life, life is about choices. And I think everyone wants what's best for themselves and everything they care about. So, you know, you want your career to be going well, you want your hobbies to be going well, you want your, uh, like time with your family and friends to be going well, your social life, all, all of that stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I think part of becoming an, an adult is realizing that that isn't always possible. You know, you, you can't be going 100 percent at everything all the time. Um, and so like most people, when they uh, like sign up for coaching, um, will say like, you, you know, like I, I want to get just as, as big, strong, lean as I possibly can. You know, I, I want to add just hundreds of pounds to all of my lifts like just be a fucking monster um but then there's like the next thing is just like a conversation of just like yeah but but like how much how much do you actually want that though um and and just kind of get a, a feeling for what someone's values and priorities are because if it's like you know i i want to uh you know i i want to have like a 500 wilkes but you know, I, I also like really don't want to be in the gym more than like four hours a week because, you know, I, there's a long commute, got to spend time with my family, jobs, important, whatever. Um, you know, then, then it's a process of saying like, okay, like we, we might need to recalibrate our expectations. Like you will, you will, what you get out of this will be a function of what you're willing to put into it. And certainly not saying it's one to one. Like th there are a lot of people who can put all the effort in the world into training, and they're never going to be a champion. But you know that just because they they picked the wrong parents for it. But in terms of the results that you can expect relative to like what your level of potential is, that's going to be a direct function of of how much effort and dedication you're willing to put into this. And uh, like an important characteristic of that conversation is like it has to be non-judgmental. Um, cause like ultimately I don't care what someone's values are. Like if, if someone does just want to completely sell out everything else in their life and really pursue powerlifting, I'm 100% supportive of that. If someone wants to get stronger, but they don't want to be in the gym more than like three hours a week because like family or their career is like a higher value to them. I am also 100% supportive of that. Um, but, you know, like, like so ma making it clear that a, this is a safe place to have this conversation. I'm not going to judge you no matter what you want to do. But but I do need to know what you want to do um, to then, like, calibrate the coaching experience. Like, what is your program going to look like? Can I reliably expect you to, like, be willing and able to do recovery stuff if we're, if we're really, really pushing the training hard. Um, if things get challenging elsewhere in your life, what sort of message do I need to deliver to you as a coach? Like if, if you aren't like that, that serious about training and it's like, 
Uh, man, like uh, one of the kids had a birthday party, uh, you know, stuff came up with work. Like I could only get to the gym one day this week. It's like, that's totally fine, dude. Like all of those things, based on what I know about you, those things are higher priorities to you than training is. And that's totally fine. And I, I love that for you. I completely support that. Don't feel bad about missing those workouts. It's It's completely okay. But if someone does if if someone's like stated priorities are no like like training and powerlifting is more important to me than anything else and then stuff like that starts coming up it's like buddy are, are you are you sure that you didn't mislead me here you know like if this is what matters to you there there, there might be some sacrifices that come along with that um and you know for some of those folks that is just a process of discovery where they find out maybe this doesn't matter to me quite as much as I thought it did. Um, but yeah, like, so it's, it's just that, that continual process, uh, I guess, of j just figuring out what, what people do actually want and what they're willing, what, what they're willing and, and comfortable with making sacrifices for. Cause like ultimately like, like there will always be sacrifices. Like, you know, you, you, you probably can't, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just restating myself at this point. Like you, you can't go hundred miles an hour at everything all the time. And if you want to go hundred miles an hour at training, some other things will have to take a back seat. If you want to go hundred miles an hour on other things, training will have to take a back seat from time to time. And so you, you just kind of have to calibrate those expectations. Yeah. In a uh, training culture, today, it, it very much feels like that there is a big kind of underlying issue with expectations. And I think it does go back to the era we live in where it's, again, social media, like you had mentioned that it's beneficial to see monsters do big things on the internet, because, you know, I don't know, watching blood and guts or something gives you an idea of how hard people can or should be working. And maybe that brings you into it. But at the same time, you kind of get numb to these performances where like really crazy world-class shit is like, it's so ubiquitous that they're, I think with a lot of people, especially people that are kind of, you know, low on that curve, they're at the, the, the start of the Dunning-Kruger curve where they don't quite know enough to know that, oh, that's probably not attainable for, for me, and it's certainly not attainable for anybody. And things are very consumerist now. So it, it is that person who's paying for a coach to kind of get the shortcut and to, to, to kind of come in through the back door with just a cash investment, maybe not a lot, a lot else. I'm right there with you. I would rather have a whole stable of people that knew what their limitations with training were and knew what they were and were not willing to give up. And it's unfortunate because I think so many people would actually be better off and probably be stronger because their training would be adjusted for it if they were in it to do good for them, mm -hmm. as opposed to going in trying to think of like, well, how close am I to that state national world record? You know, mm -hmm. I've been lifting for six months. How much weight do I have to drop to be a world champion? Um, which is something I run into quite a bit. Um, nobody, it, it's really weird growing up in the nineties where everybody was a mass monster. And now it seems oh, yeah. like no lifters want to actually grow muscle, which is very strange. 